My name is Mike Jones. I'm with Primal Canine, and I'm from Gilroy, California. So Primal Canine is a completely tailored form of dog training. Uh, what we do is that we have, a, of course, our programs where it's private lessons and group classes. We tailor all of our training in a balanced form to the dog that's in front of us. We figure out their communication, and then we teach the handlers uh, or their owners how to communicate with their dog. So essentially what we're doing, it's like a two-part system. We figure out what, what makes the dog tick, and then we teach the handler how to communicate with their dog. So we just help them um, better their relationship. You know, Primal Canine started uh, as mostly behavioral, so we worked with all the, basically the youthless cases um, and all the training, all the cases where the other trainers would just turn away. So we started with those dogs um, in behavioral, and then we've developed into a lot of personal protection, law enforcement, um, different agency, agencies we've worked with throughout the years. I mean, it's expanded quite a bit from just normal pet behavioral to the full spectrum of dog training. Well, shoot, I've been training dogs or working with dogs for the past 23 years now. Started when I was 13 um, in like a rescue uh, scenario. I kind of ran around my little neighborhood in San Jose back in California and I was just basically getting a little bit of trouble. So I ended up working with dogs, going through a uh, community service, working with the local shelter. And for me, at that point in time, dogs were really important because that got me out of the house and really just gave me peace. So I worked with dogs for a little while and then life kind of took its course. Got into boxing, um, mixed martial arts, got in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> and then when I got out um, from that trouble, I got back into dogs. And again, dogs just were like that one key factor that kept saving me over and over again. So I just kind of fully harnessed all my attention into dogs, started working at a Schutzen club as an apprentice started learning more and more about the dog world because I started in rescue and like, uh, you know, community service works, it's all positive reinforcement. And then I went into Schutzen, which is polar opposite of what I was taught. So lots of yanking crank. So for me, it was just kind of bridging the gap and figuring out how to make the communication better for the dogs and for the handlers that we're working with. Um, so started learning more, started just kind of de just like devoting my full attention into dogs and learning the process. And Roughly eight years ago, I started Primal Canine, and it's just been, I guess, I won't say uphill, but you know, it's been a great progress since then. Wow, oh, so I'm probably the only dog trainer in the world that's <laughs> dealt with this, um, the shit that we've dealt with. Um, our first, the first couple years of Primal Canine were really cool. Uh, we expanded huge, I mean, in our first year, we, I wanna say I was doing 40 to 50 clients a, week, a month, um, and then it just continued for a couple of years. So we kept continue to expand, continue to expand, which meant you know, bigger growth. We needed bigger places to train at. Uh, and then we got ran, ran into the problem when we became a little bit too big, too quick. Uh, we caught the attention of some of the city uh, officials and just different areas. So when we moved to our first really large location was in an area called Campbell. And as you guys can see, like I'm fairly heavily tattooed and with a big beard and we drove a nice big black truck and we pulled up into this really you know nice area. Uh, immediately within f three to four days, I got a call from my friend over at the animal shelter or animal control, Sergeant Jenkins. And he just is like, hey, uh, they're complaining about you already. They're saying the dog's barking. The funny story is that uh, there was no dogs there and there was no dogs barking. We just painted the, uh, the building black and then we put a, a big red sign up that said Primal Cannon in this nice area and they're, from that point on, we were fighting a losing battle over there. Um, we got kicked out of the city of uh, Campbell, San Jose. Uh, we went to court. Uh, we lost, I don't even know, close to $100,000 just in that one thing there. And then we brought ourselves back up, went over to Morgan Hill, uh, and Morgan Hill was very similar, uh, I guess, kind of Phil, um, more uppity, uh, like similar to Campbell. And we ran into that issue within six months of us opening our facility there, the the zoning codes changed, they changed it, so dog training could no longer be there. Um, then I started working with the code enforcer, code enforcer there to see if we were gonna do a CUP, the conditional use permit. And then he basically told me, they're gonna take your money and they're not gonna approve you, so you should probably just start looking for other places. So we ate quite a bit there, which was a major low, quite depressing there, <laughs> quite depressing there, and then we found our our now home in Gilroy, which the city has been really awesome to us. Uh, they take care of us. You know, we have a really good community there. So the gear that we use is extremely important. I mean, that's 90% of the stuff that we're gonna be doing, like, you know, our treat pouches, the aprons, the bite stuff that we use. I mean, it's very, very important that we have top quality gear. 
um, and stuff that's innovative and progressive as well. Nothing that's just stuck to the old stuff where you have, you know, fanny packs or other shit hanging on you. You know, stuff that's going to, like our incog pouches that they're hidden into us. So it's more incognito per se. So the dog's not necessarily chasing an apron or anything like that. Um, even to like the bite sleeves that we use, the sleeves have to be good. One, safe for the dogs and also safe for the helper or the decoy. Um, the suit as well. I mean, one misstep or you have a shitty suit, you know, you're kind of screwed. Uh, or not kind of, you are screwed. And then, you know, going down to the harnesses and the collars that uh, we use on our dogs, you know, you have to have safe collars. You have to have, you know, quality harnesses that you can, you know, utilize on your dog depending on what you guys are doing. So uh, I guess my answer to that question is that it's extremely important to have good gear. So the history of between uh, myself and Ray Allen, or I guess the history between myself and Matt Wilson, starts with a DM. Um, <laughs> so one day we were actually in the back of our Morgan Hill facility thing, we were like barbecuing over there and I was like going through my phone. And then I see this message from uh, Ray Allen and I was like, the DM started off kind of creepy. He's like, so I've been watching you from afar. And I just look, I looked at it and I think Aaron was right next to me and I was just like, look at this shit. I was like, and it's kind of like a surreal feeling, not to mention that it was creepy. So then, <laughs> so then I was like, it was like the, Bonus for me, I was like, oh, this is awesome. They got like a sense of humor too. So then we started communicating um, through DMs until I found out it was Matt that was uh, running it. So then, cause he was DMing me through another uh, account as well. And I was like, all right, cool. So we started talking about, I think I was at, talking about the, what is now the the decoy armor, mm -hmm. the primal decoy armor. So we started talking about a gauntlet and I was bugging him to make me one because I was just getting destroyed by the puppies we had. And then I, we flew up, I would say relatively soon and then that's when we started with the suit, uh, the now the semi-comp suit. I started with the suit, and then we started going, trading more ideas with that. Then we got into the incogs. Uh, I think Matt was already working on a pocket pouch, and I just had called or had called him and was just like, "Hey, like, dude, what do you think about this?" And then it started rolling from the pocket to the hoodie, um, to now what you know this will be, and then um, then the decoy armor popped, and now I mean I probably talked to. Matt and the Raylan team at least a couple times a week and bug them for new shit and new ideas and pestering consistently for, can we make this? Can you do this? Can you do that? Which I'm pretty sure you guys get fairly irritated with me on a weekly basis. <laughs> Not to mention all the suits I bang up. <laughs> so yes, it's been a long, lovely road <laughs> with our history. So in the last eight years, I've noticed quite a bit of change just with more social media, more content being put out there. Uh, and some of it's positive, some of it's negative. You know, a lot of times with, you know, having platforms and social media, people kind of get on their soapbox and stick to one thing. And it's very preach like, this is how you do it. This is the only way to do it. If you don't do it this way, it's done. Um, and I've noticed over the last couple of years, it's changed. And we've been, we've worked on that quite a bit. And that's why we've done PCU, uh, which is Primal Canine University. It's our online um, platform we talk about. Uh, where we share different perspectives in dog training because you know there's like that saying there's a thousand ways to skin a cat type of a thing not recommending skinning cats but you know that's uh, <laughs> the saying that people use and that's the thing with dog training you know dogs aren't all the same dogs are born every single day they all have different personalities no matter if the genetics are the same or not they're gonna have different learning styles so it's really important to be progressive and share perspective and not shut other people down so we've been working on that for the last you know few years and just trying to help you know, just share perspectives. And I think that's one of the biggest terms, turns in the industry I've seen in the last, like I said, couple of years is people are more open-minded. They're not shutting people down uh, as much as they used to. I mean, still dog training. So everyone is right and everyone is wrong at the same time. Um, but, you know, I've seen a lot more positivity in the last um, few years. And, you know, that's something that we strive to do as Primal Canine is, you know, continuously not stick to a cookie cutter format, make sure that we're constantly progressing, um, sharing perspectives and just continuously, continuously learning. So what really gets me excited about, you know, working with Ray Allen and just the stuff, the projects that we're working on is that I don't really see like a, a cap to it or an end to it, you know, especially with the relationship that I have with the, the Ray Allen team. It seems like almost most ideas are accepted and, you know, we're continuously working on them even to a, a fault when I overload them with stuff. So, you know, I'm really excited for the future um, with the partnership between Primal Canine and Ray Allen. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's gonna be a, a fun journey and we're gonna get a lot of cool gear and equipment out. And then, um, yeah, so I just want to say thanks to the Ray Allen team for having me out. Uh, really excited about the gear that we have. Make sure you check out the Primal Canine Decor Armor, the Incog pouches, um, both of them, the soon-to-be Incog clothing, uh, and the semi-comp suit, and much, much more to come. 
So you can check us out at Primal Canine on Instagram, uh, backslash Primal Canine on Facebook, and then PrimalCanine.com.